when we don't see the good in ourselves, when we're not seeing the good in who God is. Yeah. And so that I, I just think exactly what you're saying is so important is that we have to see more than the outside. Hello, beautiful. You have got to get in here today. This is the show for you. This is Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast, where my friends and I dig into the Word of God and we talk about the real stuff of living it, and we don't hold anything back. I'm Ginger Stocky with Aaron Cluley and Jay. Joyce is always a part of this, whether it's watching or teaching or having her sit right here with us. And uh, we just love digging into the Word of God and sharing our lives with you guys because you you are also part of this group, and sometimes you just need to talk about life with your girlfriends. So come on in here. We're going to have fun today and talk it out. Yes, we are. Thank you for calling us beautiful again. Yeah, uh-huh. I feel beautiful. I know. You just should. Just need to yeah. appreciate that. Very much. <laughs> this is our second beauty episode. Yes, love it. We really like talking about beauty. <laughs> well, we had such a great response from yeah. all of our friends with the first beauty episode. And so, you know, it's practical. We talk about some of the physical stuff that we all care about, but yeah. we also are going to talk about where real beauty comes from. Yes, We have a special guest. Our friend Jen is going to be with us today, and she's got some really poignant things to share. Yes. So can we Love start her. with the fact, and Aaron, you can always tell me to edit this out if you don't want to talk about it. That That's a really fun way to start It's anything. ironic <laughs> during our beauty episode that our friend Aaron has a nasty rash. Yeah, you don't know Wait, about this. Covering, what? Yeah, covering almost her entire body. <laughs> it's everywhere. <laughs> Why? You can kind of see it um, on my neck right here. I see it a little. Yeah, so I'm so grateful for um, Amanda who helps us with our makeup sometimes because this is all fake today because <laughs> underneath all of it is just like like red. It's all over my arms. What happened? Poor thing. I, it's really hard to say. I, I really don't know. You don't? I think it's maybe a sunscreen I used that was new. Um, so I'm not sure, but I was laughing because I got it on Saturday morning and I thought, oh, wouldn't that be so funny if it like, cause it was just here. Wouldn't that be so funny it was, if it was everywhere on Wednesday when we talked about bleeding? <laughs> wouldn't that be hilarious? That won't happen because it's only Saturday and I'm sure it won't, that's, that's not that big of a deal. And then every day it progressively got worse. And oh. so I kept having these thoughts. One, like don't ever pray for something you're not prepared to have a conversation about. Yeah. Um, but it also brought up the topic of like, what what is real beauty? Is this going to keep me from feeling good about myself? Right. Or am I just still going to live my life and rock that rash? Yeah. Wow. Well, I love that you're still rocking the pleather pants too. Oh, you know rash I Rash does not matter. <laughs> you're going to look good no matter what. Actually, I recommend you should wear pleather pants when you have a rash because it counteracts. Oh, it does it? Yeah. It, makes you, it, it lifts, like for me, wearing a little bit of leather makes me feel good. Uh-huh. So to counteract my things that are bothering me, a uh-huh. little leather helped. Okay, good. Nice. Every now and then you'll probably see Erin just kind of lean back on the couch. <laughs> 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 I might now. I might we'll go back and forth a little on her back. You. <laughs> you don't say. <laughs> So we all made the commitment, and you guys did with us, so I hope it's going well for you guys, for this year to be a year of less complaining. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you keep asking us about so it. So in that spirit, mm-hmm. yeah, we we do want to talk about how easy it is for all of us, men and women, let's be honest, mm-hmm. to focus on the negative and to complain yeah. about how we look. Yeah. So you, you know when you give someone a compliment, and I'm, I'm terrible at this, I just... Deflect them. Uh-huh. You're like, you know, oh, thank you, but you're you're stupid. You're wrong. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So it it really is easy to complain about how we look and and not realize where our beauty comes from. Yeah, I remember when I when I first had my daughter. Years, you know, she's 18 now, and when I first had her, I remember because my body had gone through such a huge like transformation mm-hmm. from being like cheerleader style like size like size one I was like the the transformation of being a zero one to a one zero whoa that was crazy but then I even think about what we go through yeah we have to carry a person a human. and then shove it out <laughs> it, it, it's not good for you know our our, All parts of our bodies go through changes, a lot. and a lot of times and the changes are not bad. They're not bad, but it's just it's a traumatic change to it your is. body. Yeah, like yeah. I was accustomed to being this five one 
cheerleader that was a flyer like so to for, to being like like a little tiny house like if I felt like a little tiny <laughs> that's what I felt like <laughs> she's a brick house a brick house <laughs> now, now I'm a brick house but, <laughs> but honestly when I first had that well I was more like an like a 6'8 you know when I after I had my daughter and I look back now and I'm not a 6'8 anymore it's kind of like my goal but <laughs> but I look back when I was so miserable, and I was also dealing with postpartum too, mm-hmm. but I was so miserable after having her because even the pregnancy didn't go the way that I w- thought it would go. I ended up having to have a C-section. I was just in a lot of pain. I was just uncomfortable. I felt ugly. I just cut my, all my hair off. Like it was just, I was just really, yeah. I went through so many changes that, but I look back at that now and I'm like, man, I wish I looked like that again. You know, like mm. I didn't appreciate sure. because it was so drastically different from what I was accustomed to mm-hmm. that I didn't even appreciate it. But now that's my that's like, oh, I'd love to get back to mm-hmm. looking how I looked right after I had my kid. You know, yeah. so it just really I thought about that as we were talking, you know, as I was studying about this and just how we don't always appreciate where we are right now. Exactly. And then when we look back at a photo, it's like, oh, I wasn't even that bad. Yeah. You know? That's why we're calling this the beauty episode even prettier because we're going to dig in a little bit deeper, even more than we did last time to understand all those things that impact how we see ourselves mm-hmm. yeah. and try to understand how other people see us. It's so different than the way we often yeah. see ourselves. Yeah. So coming up, we're, we're, we are going to give some of our own like secret little beauty things yeah. that we like that that makes us feel pretty on the outside. Um, we have a wonderful guest who's going to talk about what she hears from people who are in her chair as a makeup artist and yeah. also what she's personally experienced. So um, we're going to jump right in with Joyce's first teaching that we're going to listen to because it really helps us understand what it is that we need to embrace instead of shying away from who we are, what we need to embrace about what God has put in us and who He's created us to be. So let's start there. Being your authentic and unique self in a world that is usually trying to make you what they want you to be is a challenge that we will deal with at varying times throughout our lives. We're all unique, and that's a good thing. That's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. There is no one exactly like you in the world, no one, and that makes you not only unique, but special. I want you to get that. One-of-a-kind things are usually very valuable, and they're sought after. With that in mind, why do we try so hard to be someone else. Why do we try to be like other people? It's usually because we are not fully accepting ourselves and we fear that other people won't either. It's amazing how the way we feel about ourselves, we usually project onto other people thinking that they'll feel the same way about us that we do. God gives each of us unique talents, abilities, and traits. But he doesn't give anyone everything. I think that's a very important point. None of us have everything, but we all have something. By doing this, he's requiring us to depend on one another. If you have a gift that I need, but I don't have that gift, then I need to depend on you to come alongside me and share that gift. He wants us to work together and appreciate the gifts that are in one another rather than being jealous of them and trying to copy them. One of the best things that you can do is to accept yourself and believe that God created you in your mother's womb with his own hand very carefully and that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Let me say again, you are very special. You're unique, you're special, and you are very valuable. And I feel in my heart that some of you really, really need to hear that, so I'm gonna say it again. You are unique, you're very special, and you're very valuable. 
Maybe no one has ever told you that. Maybe there have even been people in your life that have made you feel the exact opposite. I know I wondered what was wrong with me because I didn't feel like I was like everyone else. And so I thought I was weird, but God taught me that I was actually unique. Why so often do we hear what Joyce is saying about being unique and change that into there's something wrong with me mm-hmm. because I'm not like everybody else. Yeah. It's yeah. just it's just something we all have to work through. Jen Smith is our wonderful, beautiful Hi. friend who we love so Yay. much. We're Yay. so glad you're here with us. I'm so honored to be here. <laughs> she is a wonderful makeup artist, um, great with hair. And so you said the three things that you love your your passions. I got to read this because I love it so much. Let me let me find it. Let me find it. Let me find it. Okay. Um, I can't. I cannot. I cannot find it. Closer. Oh wait, I found it. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. The three passions are faith, empowering women, yes. and makeup. Absolutely. I love that. Yes. It's so fun and real. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's Absolutely. be Absolutely. real about it. Yeah, I know when you guys asked me to do this, and I thought, okay, what am I going to talk about? And then uh, when it was all geared around this, I thought, oh my goodness, okay, I can do this. <laughs> it's my three things. Like, I can, like yeah, we're going to be good. Um, yeah, you know, and just listening to, to Joyce just talking and saying, you know, that we project those things on, so we, on you know, what, what our insecurities are, we project, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and this is so interesting, and this is something that I, I talk to people and I talk to Aaron about. Mm-hmm. When women sit in my chair, um, the first thing that they do for about three minutes is tear themselves down. Mm-hmm. Mm. For the moment a woman sits in my chair, that is the fr- it is universal. Mm. It doesn't matter if I have Miss Missouri sitting in my chair. It doesn't matter if I have you know the, a talk show host, a model who I'm getting ready to shoot for a magazine or a Target ad or an HBO. St- like we're getting ready to shoot. A mo- doesn't matter. It is a universal thing that the moment the women sit in my chair, they want to tear themselves down and they talk about oh, my pores are so big, or, oh, I know I have, like, small eyes, I'm sorry. Like, oh, I didn't get, you know, my eyebrows are kind of... And as women, I think we just... It's almost like I need to admit and tell you the things I know that are wrong with me mm-hmm. before you yeah. before yeah, you, you know you tell me. Oh, yeah. Before mm-hmm. you notice it. Like, I'm going to tell you, you hey, don't I know have to I say have big it. pores. I know, it about I, know I have this, yeah. you know. And the coolest thing about, like, makeup artists, when you ask us a question, you know, hey, what's good for pores or what's good for redness? I have an answer. Yeah. Because everybody deals with it. Hmm. Like every single woman has the same issues. We just don't know that. I love that that. your job is about pulling out Mm -hmm. the beauty in everyone Mm because everybody has features that can be highlighted and and just add so much. But really, that's all of our jobs as women. You talk about empowering women. Let's pull out the beauty in each other, the things inside that make her so special Mm -hmm. and and the things outside that that really stand out. Absolutely. Jen, you also went through a personal experience that was really difficult that mm-hmm. impacted your life and your work and probably even how you saw yourself for oh, a every, time. Every aspect of my life um, was affected by it. And and so what it was is I I was coming up on, you know, 40. And so we were, were getting married, weddings coming up. Um, I started kind of looking in the mirror and I, and I am, I'm in this industry and I, I do see all of it and I kind of got caught up in it. And um, I thought, you know, I've never really done anything cosmetically. So let me just kind of dive into it. Um, I had heard about microneedling. I had heard that it promises these results of building collagen and decreases fine lines and correct sunspots and all these great, you know, things about it. Um, and so I did. I, I signed up and I went and I had microneedling done. And um, unfortunately, that led me down a a very a very dark mm-hmm. dark road um, in my life. It led to I, it, I'm still suffering from it today. Um, it's been over two years. I had to go see specialists. Um, my skin was just forever changed. Mm-hmm. I had to go see specialists. I was mm-hmm. on multiple medications, um, sleeping with ice packs. I couldn't. I couldn't go outside. Wow. I couldn't be with my kids during the summer. So I would, Ugh. my friends would go and, you know, send me videos because they took my kids to the pool for me because I couldn't. Um, we had to cancel our wedding. Um, wow. I wasn't able to work. Uh, it, a lot of things. Yeah, real a lot of serious things, A lot stuff. of serious things. So I was going to show you guys these. This is me before. and then So pretty. <laughs> thank, thank you. And then here I can see is, why you needed to do some work. <laughs> <laughs> no, she is gorgeous. She is so beautiful. I love her so much. 
<laughs> I love her so much. And then here is wow. kind of what I went through. Poor thing. Yeah. <laughs> was it immediate after you had it done? That it you was. Experienced it? I can tell you that um, from the research oh, wow. I had done, um, even when I left that day, something mm-hmm. felt off. Oh. Yeah. And it progressively got worse. And even by that afternoon, I was reaching out um, back and saying, you know, some, you you said it would be like a minor sunburn. And I feel like I've mm-hmm. had acid poured on my face. Like yeah. I cannot get relief from how much this hurts. And um, so pretty much right away. And then it just progressively continued to get worse. And I ended up doing tissue samples, biopsies, all kinds of things to try and... One of the pictures you showed is, I think it's you with an ice pack. Yeah, I had to sleep with ice packs because it it just radiated. A lot of people are like, oh my gosh, I would never show my face if it looked like that. Like, you know, during those moments. But I think it's so important. And especially me, that's like I am in the beauty industry. Like this is, Mm -hmm. you know to show that not everything goes the way you're expecting it to. And we all have struggles. And I personally can relate to people who are more vulnerable. You know, if, mm-hmm. I, if I'm watching someone and everything seems so perfect in their life, but the moment, like, if you can just be real and be mm-hmm. vulnerable and show that, you know, I've gone through struggles too. Yeah. It just, it helps. Mm-hmm. Why it hide helps our scars? Women. I mean, honestly. Absolutely. It's, we're all there in, in different ways, mm-hmm. but we all have those painful things that that yeah. we live through and like you said things yeah. that don't go the way the, yeah. we, we plan thought. them to yeah. so how did how did this time impact how you saw yourself and oh what did you goodness. learn through it <sighs> um I'll it it hit me it sent me into a pretty deep depression I'll be honest sure. and you know um as much as I thought I was like strong and and you know my looks weren't that that important, you know, because I, I do, I do believe that, you know, all of this, like everything, hair, lashes, the makeup, all of it. Um, but when you take all that away and you just don't feel good, mm-hmm. you know, just all the medications, you don't feel good. You don't know when there's an end in sight. Um, I wasn't able to go and work. So my, my income is gone. Mm-hmm. My business is pretty much gone at that point, canceling the wedding. Um, I can't really play with my kids. I don't feel good. Mm. I it 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 hit hard. Yeah, um, I did. I went through through quite a bit, and I. Uh, How I, long did you have the effects of this? I still to this day, I'm mm. still suffering. So I mean, there's a lot of makeup. Um, I've learned how to manage it a little bit better now, as far as covering things up, and I've kind of had to just l- learn to live with it. Um, but yeah, it's been over two years. So, is the pain still as bad as it was then? There are times. Are there? Yeah, there are. Um, they kind of call them like flare up you know, um, where all of a sudden it'll, it'll feel like it's coming back. And there's, there's certain times I'll be out in the sun, all of a sudden I'll, okay, I got to get out of the sun. Mm-hmm. I can feel my, my face is starting to, to mm-hmm. kind of, it's just a, a different feeling now that, and it's something I'd never had before. I'd never, I was blessed. I never even had acne. I never had anything, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, mm-hmm. prior to this. So, and I just, I think that's why for me, it's just so important for women to, you do have to find who you are outside of the beauty industry, you yeah. really do. And it's, that's hard because mm-hmm. we're surrounded by it. Mm-hmm. We're surrounded by it, you know, and I, I told Aaron, you know, it used to be that you would compare yourself to say like a really pretty mom that was dropping her kids off at school or the mom at soccer or, oh, so-and-so, you know, she always seems to have it together. She's a size two. She, you know, um, now with social media, you can compare yourself to a woman who lives in Australia. In the world, mm-hmm. yeah. You're like, you're never going to see her. Mm-hmm. And you're just comparing yourself every single day to like this woman who her life could be falling apart, but she's taking that time to post that picture, mm-hmm. you know? So I just think it's mm-hmm. a dangerous, a dangerous slope. And yeah. I think that's why I'm so adamant about like speaking and just making sure women know that we all look the same before all of this. Like mm-hmm. every woman, in fact, the woman in, on the magazine, the woman in the magazine that you're looking at does not look like the woman in the magazine. <laughs> like yeah. she doesn't. In real life, yeah, right. she doesn't. She she looks like you. She looks like wearing pajamas with her hair in a bun, no makeup. Mm-hmm. Like that's the real person. And we all look like that. And I think we just got to be careful not to to think that everybody looks, you know, yeah, yeah. perfect all the time because we don't. <laughs> I, I love that scripture that Joyce shared um, yeah. in Psalm 139. Mm-hmm. Verse 14, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. If we forget that your works are wonderful, Mm -hmm. that's where we fall off a cliff. Because we can believe that God makes other people fearfully and wonderfully, but we still only see our 
our flaws. Yeah. But when we remember His works are wonderful and mm-hmm. I am a part of mm-hmm. His works, mm-hmm. yeah. then when we don't see the good in ourselves, when we're not right. seeing the good in who God is. Yeah. And so that I, I just I think that. exactly Absolutely. what you're saying is so important is that we have to see more than the outside. We do. I was mm-hmm. talking to a group of uh, 11, 12-year-old girls a couple weeks ago, and so we were talking about comparison. Mm-hmm. And so I... I asked them at the beginning, um, tell like pick a person and tell them why you think they're great. Mm-hmm. Compliment them. Super easy for them to do. It was loud and you know lots of communication. Then I said, write down five things that you like about yourself. And it took them a while. Yeah. And I said, how, how was that experience? And they, one girl said, it was hard because she felt bad talking positively about herself. Mm -hmm. Like it was like, you're not supposed to Mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. So we talked about what you just said, the fact that there's, you know, there's a line, like you don't want to be prideful, but you are acknowledging that you are God's creation. He, he created you. And so you are, you are like a piece of art. So for you to feel good about yourself and and compliment yourself is not prideful. That's, that's Mm -hmm. appreciating God's beauty. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then on the flip side of when you don't see the good in yourself, say out loud that God has created you, that you are a work of art and begin to believe that. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know what? I was thinking, and I, this is a question that I guess I have for you guys. So I know in the black community, like a lot of times the older people in our community like to talk about your physical appearance a lot. You know, like about their own. No, about 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 (laughs) man. (laughs) (laughs) Any girl, like look at you, your little skinny self, or look at you, you look at those hips, like look Mm -hmm. at you, you didn't, you know, Mm -hmm. like it's it's. So all my black people watch it. Can y'all stop doing that? <laughs> because what it does, like I'm serious. Like when I was younger, mm-hmm. that's how I ended up putting a lot of my confidence in my looks. Sure, mm-hmm. that was something that I was like, yeah. And I was tiny. I was petite, you know. And and I was just like happy about that, you know, because they made that seem like yeah. the prize. Mm-hmm. But then when you start getting old, and they're like, look at you. And they, I think it's like a turn. Like they they. A lot of my aunties and my grandma, especially my grandma, like <laughs> wanted me to feel like I was growing up. You know, look at yeah. you got hips, like grandma, oh. like it, <laughs> like it's an endearment. But yeah, but like like I ordered it online. Like, <laughs> like I, wanted, you know, I did get my hips. They came on Amazon. Thank you, and they fit. And like, grandma, like I mean, it, it, it's so much about yeah. yep. the physical beauty, yeah. you know, about things. And then if I did get a, a bump or like, you know, it's mm-hmm. like, oh, girl, it's like, okay. You know, so I think a lot of that, I can't speak about that in, in other cultures, but I know in the black community, it's that's a big thing. Mm-hmm. And I've even seen it even with my daughter, like, because she's, you know, she's tall, she's beautiful. But like, as she makes these changes mm-hmm. and she's a woman, she's 18 now. So she doesn't, I'm like, you're not going to look like you looked when you were 13, right. but people's comments towards her have changed and they're not, it's, they're not intended to be hurtful, mm-hmm. but they are, mm-hmm. it's making her think like, well, mom, I'm filling out or yeah. mom, you know, and just, she was in the modeling industry yeah. for a little bit. And, and it was a lot of scrutiny on what she ate and how many carbs she yes. ate and how many calories and how, mm. and then she's just like, I, I don't know if I can handle that. So that was another added pressure, but I'm just yeah. saying, I don't know. How's it, how did you, did people talk about y'all's physical stuff at all? I, I think it's it's universal. It's just in a yeah. different way. Uh, yeah, because yeah, my grandma. I don't. I don't think it's out loud. Grandma didn't do it. Mine did. She still does today. Grandma, if you watch it, stop. <laughs> but how often do people sit around and talk about? You know, I think so and so's gained mm-hmm. a little weight, or yes. you know, it just yeah. it, it's a comparison thing. Even that we do. Like you said, um, mm-hmm. about ourselves, mm-hmm. when somebody says something about us, when somebody hasn't seen us for a while, yes. the first yes. thing we'll say is, you know, I, I look a little different than last time you saw me. I put yeah. on 10 pounds or whatever. And mm-hmm. we we do that to ourselves as much, but mm-hmm. but other people definitely do it too. Well, yeah, yeah. but I'm like, what is the expect? Why is that the expectation for us yeah. to say yeah, the I exact t- same after so much time has changed? Like, mm-hmm. we're getting that so is much- unreasonable. Yeah. It's unreasonable. <laughs> Reasonable. We do look different. And we do. Yes. Yes. And okay. we should. We and should. We're grown, like we should. And, but yeah. why do we not want to? Well, yeah. I don't, I mean, and that's one thing that I'm trying to like really embrace. I don't want to look like I looked at 30. Mm-hmm. I don't even want to look like I looked at t- 20. Like, Absolutely. I don't want to look like a kid. Absolutely. Like, I'm already short. I don't need to look like a kid. <laughs> like, <laughs> Absolutely. I don't right. So I'm okay. I'm okay. I, I don't 
of course, there are things I can do to help myself. And we, of course, we're going to talk about that more. There are things that we can do to make us feel better about ourselves. But I am learning to embrace where I am right now because I don't want to look yeah. back when I turn 50 and look at myself at 40 like, girl, you look good and you mm-hmm. wasted all that goodness being upset. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. like so I don't, I'm trying to learn from, from mm-hmm. what I did before. Mm-hmm. And I think that's so much yes. about where beauty comes from too, so is too. beauty comes when we embrace who we are yes. instead of fighting against yeah. it. Like, mm-hmm. like yeah. for me, I, I just want to tell everybody, embrace your age. Mm-hmm. Em- embrace the wisdom that God has given yeah. you. You know, I'm 58. I don't look anything like I did when I was 25. Yeah. Um, you don't even look 58, though. No, no, no you I was. I, I yeah, okay, thought that was what you were about to say. Going, going, come on, confidence. Rise up. And I don't look anything <laughs> like you. 58. I'm like, come on, girl. <laughs> I, I'm thinking, thing. I was thinking, did she say 58? <laughs> like, what is she? Okay. Well, I, and I think that's the beautiful thing about it. It's like God has taught me so much in those years, I would not give it up for anything. Mm-hmm. And yet, yeah, I'd like to, you know, see a few things be a little bit different here and there. We all would, but I would much rather embrace the grace that God has given me for 58 years, the blessings yeah. that He's given me, than go back to where I was and to look the way I did when mm-hmm. I was happier with the reflection I saw in the mirror. I want to be happy with the reflection that I see in people's eyes more than I do yeah. the reflection yes. that I see in the mirror of myself. If if I can in any way show somebody the love of Christ when they see me, that's really what I want. And yes, I want to look good. I'm not saying it doesn't yeah, matter. Do. You know, yeah. we it, it does matter to us. And I think especially as women, there's just something in us. It's all through the Bible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's something in us that that we do want to be beautiful. But where that beauty comes from is different in different cultures. Yes. And it's it's not what our mind says beauty is. Yeah. Like, I can look in the mirror, and I, I see my flaws. I see mm-hmm. the rash upon my skin. <laughs> upon <laughs> my skin. That was beautifully it's said. Lovely. <laughs> lovely. The old <laughs> English makes it sound yeah, better. It's a fancy rash. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I see that is, there's a mom who's working really hard yes. for her kids. Yeah. There's a friend who is praying for her friend who's going through something hard. So I and I can say that that's true. Like I can look in the mirror and see the imperfections, but I can also see like I'm I'm God's girl, and yeah. so for today I'm okay. That is, beautiful. you know. So yeah. and I say that because like I want our friends to have hope. Yes. Like mm-hmm. we we can look in the mirror and see ourselves as beautiful. Yes. Um, it's not is, just have to see the hard stuff. And that yeah. is so important. And 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 what you were saying about grace too, you know, and to tie in with what you were just saying is like. So for me personally, like, you know, I was like you. I went from like, I was this big, and then I was this big after my kids. And and I kept watching all these videos, and I kept beating myself up. And I don't know if there's other women like that can relate to this, but I, on Instagram, I was following like every fitness person there was. And I was like, you know, oh yeah, I'm going to save that video because like I'm doing that workout. I'm going to save that video. I mean, I have like a stack of videos. I've never, I've looked at like, <laughs> thank you. I'm like, I, nothing. No, my cardio is like going down to the pantry and back up. Stay. Like, it's, there's no, <laughs> thank you. I know, I'm like, this is my cardio. Like, no. Um, and so like, I finally kind of, you know, and, and I mean, for like a good six years, I was beating myself up. Like at night, I'd be like, oh, you didn't go to the gym today and you didn't do this. And, you, and finally, I kind of got to that place where I went, no, I didn't go to the gym, but man, I prayed for someone so today. Mm-hmm. I, I volunteered doing this. I was there for my kids and I sat up with them and did their homework. Mm-hmm. I was there for my husband tonight. I made dinner. I did all of these things. And then I finally I just kind of let myself off the hook and said, okay, I'll get to it. And maybe I won't. Maybe, yeah. when, you know, but maybe when my kids are grown and they're out of the house and I am retired and I have time to do it, but it's okay if I never get around to looking like that. Mm-hmm. That's okay with me. And, and that's a really good place. Out of you. Hmm? Your beauty just pours out of you. Okay. It does. It does because you just, you're, you're like peace with yourself. And yeah. it, and mm-hmm. I, I wish that like, okay, so now I'm like coming up on 40. I wish that we had this kind of knowledge like when we're back, like in our 20s, because you go through so many years of beating yourself up and, and just feeling like you need to look a certain way. And then I don't know, something just clicks and you go, this is who I am. And yeah. I'm good with that. And it's, well, you know. I, I really only think that that it works because of experience like you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And that's why I love sharing this with younger people, too. Yeah, it's like yes. if we can grasp it now, it will save so much heartache in the long run and really see 
what the Bible says about who we are. Yeah. Really dig into what God's Word says. And so we're going to listen to Joyce uh, another time and just find out kind of the antidote for this comparison and bad feelings and all these things that we're talking about. Some of the disciples asked Jesus, it's recorded in Matthew 22, which of all the commandments is the most important? And Jesus said the first and most important commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and all your strength. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. Now, think about that. How do you love yourself? You see, you may think that it would be wrong to love yourself. I'm not saying to be in love with yourself. I'm not saying to have yourself on your mind all the time and think that everybody should always be doing what you want them to do. But I'm saying to love yourself, to love God's creation. And really, I believe that if we don't love ourselves in a balanced and a godly way, then we're not receiving the love that God is giving us. Romans 5.5 5 tells us that the love of God is shed abroad, are poured into our heart by the Holy Spirit. So one of the first things that you should sense and feel when you receive Christ as your Savior is the love of God. You know, that may sound very simple. It's easy for us to tell other people Jesus loves you, but are you receiving His love for you? Are you for you or are you against you? No one is going to love everything we do. As a matter of fact, I don't love everything that I do. But we should love the person that God created us to be. We can learn to love ourselves because He loves us and because it's God's will for us to do so. And until you come to terms of peace with yourself, now listen to what I'm going to say, you are never going to enjoy your life. Until you come to terms of peace with yourself, you are never going to enjoy your life. 1 Peter 3, 10 and 11 says that in order to love life, enjoyable days, good days, that we have to keep our tongue from evil. That's interesting. So how we talk is very important. And I might just throw out a question right here now. How do you talk about yourself? I hear people say, I'm so stupid, I can never do anything right. I used to say things like that, but I've had to learn to talk about myself the way God talks about me. Because when you say bad things about yourself, you're actually opening a door for the enemy, for the devil, to come and just wreak havoc in your life. I think what she is saying is so much more important than we can ever realize. Yeah. You, when we think about how we talk about ourselves, do we have peace in who we are? That's yeah. so important. The other flip side of that is, do you know of anybody more ugly than people who talk bad about other people? Yeah. yeah. Right. I mean, you can look beautiful on the outside, but when you open your mouth and you start spewing poison about other people, mm -hmm. that beauty fades away and you become the ugliest person on the planet. Yeah. Yes. It doesn't mm -hmm. matter what you look like if you if your insides are ugly and you're spewing out ugliness. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's why what really matters is what's inside and how you communicate to others. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I love about walking in here. Whatever we, that's one thing I think the three of us have learned. I don't know if it's just natural. I think we've always done it. We find something to compliment each other on, yes. which I think that's what it, what real mm -hmm. friendship and sisterhood is about. You find, It doesn't matter. I don't know if you had a bad day. I didn't even realize you're rash. Thank you. I didn't. <laughs> until, you. Until, you, until, you, until you brought it up that it was upon thee. You know? <laughs> but, but I mean, the first thing you said to me, oh, pink, you look so pretty. And then I ended up saying like, that's beautiful, like rusty color. I don't know. Like we just mm -hmm. end up complimenting each other. And I think that that's what what people need to surround themselves by is not mm -hmm. people that point out your flaws. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes. you can have honest conversations, yeah. but I think. Yeah. I recommend you hang out with my daughter. Because um, she oh, said yes. she, I walked into her room this morning and she said, "Mommy, your dress is beautiful." Aww. I said, "Thank you." And um, yesterday, I, I said, Peyton, when I got her up, I said, Peyton, what do you, what do you think is beautiful about yourself? And she said, "Oh, 
my freckles. I love my freckles. And she said, my face is beautiful. That's and I thought, I, so great. I yeah. pray that that never stops. Yeah. And so we talked for like a solid five minutes about all the things she loves about herself. And then I went mm-hmm. and I said, because she asked me, she said, what, do you, what is beautiful on you? And so I told her some things that I think are beautiful. And I want those to be the conversations we're having with each other. Yeah. I want to talk about that with my friends. So mm-hmm. out loud, we're vocalizing, you look great. Yeah. Today, and I love your heart. Yeah. yeah. So I have um, two daughters and then I have a son who's in, in high school. And my, my young or my middle is in middle school. And um, she has her little friends over and they know this. They know that Jen's going to do this if they put themselves down because they constantly, oh, mm-hmm. look, they, yeah, you see my waist is this big or my, you know, just anything, their hair color, their eyes, their freckles, their nose, their teeth. I'm like, my goodness, you know? And so anytime I ever hear them put themselves down, they always go, oh, did your mom hear it? Because I make them <laughs> sit down and we talk and I make them say three things they love about themselves. I love Good it. Good for you. And I am like diligent about it because I'm like, no, I want to make sure. And it, it takes them a while. Mm-hmm. And it, that's yeah, amazing that, to yeah. me. They can rattle off all the things. But when I make them sit down and go three things and they'll go, oh. And I'm like, it can't be about like your family. It can't be generic. It has to be three things. Because if you're talking physical things, then I want you to say three things that are beautiful about you. And um, that's good. That's powerful. Yeah. That's it's a great powerful idea. and it's great, but I mean, yeah, that you should hear them because the moment they say something, they'll go, oh, did your mom hear me? <laughs> <laughs> that's good. And they're like, because they know. We, we want to talk about some of the things that make us feel beautiful. Yes. yes. And, and I think that encourages so many people because it's it's not always, you know, somebody did my makeup today. Mm-hmm. Um for for me, one of the ugliest things I've ever done, I look so bad, when, <laughs> when um, I went skydiving a few months ago. And so, Which I love. The photo. Oh, my like, goodness. Uh, uh, the uh, photos, the video. I mean, your skin is flapping up and breathing. It's, got, yeah, it's, it's in the wind like, like the, this. The air stuck in the cheeks. <laughs> and it's like the most hideous thing you've ever seen. And I get down and and I'm I'm – doing a video because I'm so excited about it and my hair is just like nuts and and, you know you just got this crazy look in your eyes and it's the best I've ever felt Mm -hmm. because no matter how bad it looked on the outside it was just an experience that I knew God gave me because I wanted to do it it was exhilarating he protected me and I didn't die so it was all really really (laughs) great all positive (laughs) (laughs) so sometimes there are things that just make us feel good Mm -hmm. about who we are no matter what we look like. Yeah, and I, yes. I think that's so important. I think about things like being genuine, b- being vulnerable, yes. things like just a real smile because I care about somebody. Mm-hmm. That, that's more beautiful than you can put yeah. on with any clothes. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, There are just so many things. Peace in a person's life yeah. is so beautiful. Yeah. Just a, that calmness that they know who they are in Christ. So what, what things make you guys feel beautiful? While, you, while you're pulling yours, I want to say something real quick. Why is it when we're in our most authentic state, we look the ugliest? Like, yeah, <laughs> real, yeah. I'm real peace. Well, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> when I'm laughing, like when I'm in full joy, capacity, I'm like, <laughs> like, it's just not flattering. Like, I know. It's like, is this a joke, Pat? Like, like, <laughs> it's like when I'm having the most authentically fun time. Like yeah. and it's captured yes. on photo. That's the one. I'm, delete immediately. <laughs> like, like, but what I think oh, is I that's the photo great. you hate. But that's probably the other ones that people see. They're like, she is awesome. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Because that's oh the beauty that gosh, we see in other people. Five thousand yes. of my teeth. I'm just like my God. <laughs> what, what? That's, when I'm in my most authentic state. Yeah. yeah. It's probably yeah. It's, like when I'm more like at peace or at restful or joyful. I'm just yeah. like not cute on photos. But go ahead and get yeah, your, that's good. Get your yeah. I, this is a question. I'm like, is this a joke, God? Like, oh. no, it's br- it's 100. real. I completely, completely relate to that. One because when I'm like not, you know, like on or I'm needing to be in front of the hair or you know, um, on set, this is all, you know, like I don't have this. I'm like, I have my hair up in a ponytail. No makeup, no brows. I don't have eyebrows, like to save my life. <laughs> and I was like, I have no lashes, and I was like, and I'm pay- and I'm out there in my pajamas, probably don't match, you know, just knowing me, and I am just living my best life, like just hanging that out on my backpack. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's do this then, because I want to end with some of these 
these fun beauty tips because okay. I know yes. all of our friends out there love this stuff. So okay. I definitely okay. want to hear your steps, but hold on. No, okay. I've turned around five times. I know. <laughs> I know. Hold on. I can't wait to see what's behind your yes, back. Yes, please. <laughs> we, we want to equip people very strongly oh, yes. with with why you're so beautiful. Yeah. yeah. We all have to know that. So here, here's a, a few scriptures I pulled out that I just love. Ephesians 2.10, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared for us yeah. in advance to do. I, there's nothing more beautiful than someone who is really loving someone else well. Yeah. And when we care for people, that is really where an amazing beauty is. I mean, some, you would not believe how, well, you would, because you've seen it if you've watched the show, how bad I look in the mission field. <laughs> like I'm sweating every pore it, like on my face, because I only sweat on my face. I don't know why. My face gets red <laughs> like it's going to explode, and my face sweats and nothing else does. So I, and my hair is in my face in a disaster, and I look terrible, but I don't care. Yeah. Because I'm yeah. so happy with loving on these people and telling their stories and what we get to do. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, that was hard for me at first. It's like, everyone's seeing me like that. And then it's like, I don't care because yeah. that's who I am. Mm, yeah. Good. Yes. So I, I love that. Here's another verse. Um, Genesis one twenty seven. So God created mankind in his own image. That's all you have to know. He created us in his image. So all the goodness of God and so many beautiful things about who he is, the the fruit of his Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. That that is where our beauty pours yeah, out. Yeah. So I love that. And then Proverbs 31, 25, because we love to talk about our clothes. Mm -hmm. She is clothed in strength and dignity, mm -hmm. and that comes from the Lord. And if I can just throw in great shoes, great shoes are important because no matter what size your jeans get, your shoes still fit. Mm -hmm. So your shoes are your friends forever. That's good. Yeah, it's true. It's true. tag right there. So <laughs> should we talk about some of the practical yes. fun yes. things? Uh -huh. yes. Okay, turn around again. Yeah. Okay, ready? Yeah. Okay. 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 Oh, wait. <laughs> Go for it. I'm bringing it out. Go for it. I brought I brought my leather jacket, mm. uh, or leather pants. But to me, when I feel like I just need a little something extra, um, I like to pull put on like a leather jacket because I sometimes feel like just like a little girl. Sometimes I feel like I'm twelve still. Which does that <laughs> sound silly? But putting on something that feels a little bit edgy to me yeah. does something inside of me. Uh -huh. So I say that to say, find your little thing. Yeah, that, like yeah, whatever it is. Just a little pep in your step. Maybe it's bling for somebody yeah. else. Maybe it's Red camo. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. So mine yeah. is a leather jacket. Love it. Yeah, that's great. That's yeah. Great. Is that all you're gonna share? Well, I have a few others. Oh, let me tell you this one too. <laughs> it's worth it's worth the time. Um, this is my babyless pro. Curling iron. You have to do it like this, like a social media influencer. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> my nails. This is my baby. Let's <laughs> curl. But I love it so much. My uh, the girl who does my hair told me about it, and it's just fabulous. The best curling iron ever. Yeah, Jen knew what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, it's a good one. Those are my two. I'm gonna write that down. Yeah, you, yeah, you should. That's yeah, good. <laughs> okay, well, go ahead. I of course love hair. So I change my hair whenever I feel like it. And so um, I used, last time we did this, I brought hair in, in a box. <laughs> but <laughs> now I have hair, hair, hair on my you, head. I was gonna, you are my, oh my gosh, I love you. I love you. It's up here right now. <laughs> Another one from the box? Yeah. <laughs> I a couple of the bundles. Yeah. <laughs> so she's on, she's on my head. I very, like, despite contrary belief, I rarely wear wigs. I've, mm -hmm. I hardly ever, I, I do sew-ins or quick weaves. Yeah. We could talk about the those details. We, could we have yeah, whole girl, because it's, it's so many extension <laughs> tricks and things like that. But I love anyways. that you call the hair she. You know, oh, yeah, that's yes. great. These I love that. Friends. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> They're my friends. I love them. Um, <laughs> but like, I love like my hair. Sometimes just is my personality. It just depends mm -hmm. on what kind of mood I'm in. If I'm wanting to be sassy and short, right. if I wanted to be like more like. And honestly, after my divorce, like I. I went through this phase of, and I'm still going through it, of like really embracing me and loving me and embracing even the softer side of me. And so because I can't make my hair grow any faster, it's growing, but I can't make it grow faster. I'm like, well, that's why they make it to put in your head. Mm -hmm. So I want it longer because I want to feel more feminine. So huh. that's another thing. Like when, I, when I'm feeling not so feminine because I felt rejected, I didn't want to wear a lot of camo unless I wore heels with it. You mm -hmm. know, I didn't want to wear, yeah. like, I, like, I, I, like, I'm like you, I don't, I don't look, I look a mess most of the time, but I, I started getting even my extensions back in because in the morning I realized that 
Satan, Satan was making me not like how I looked when I first woke up. Mm-hmm. And so putting extensions and putting extensions in my eye, uh, my, my lashes oh, yeah. actually helped me when I first woke up. Mm-hmm. So that another thing, because my midsection, I'm not a fan of that either. <laughs> um, I like fanny packs. Woo-hoo! <laughs> <laughs> I wore it. That's a good <laughs> And it's handy to carry things it's handy. in. And not only is it fashion forward again, <laughs> it's handy and it covers up your pooch, you know? <laughs> so oh, I have other God. things too, That's but those great. are my main things. That's like good. my hair and my fanny pack right now, they're my besties and good shapewear. So find that too. Yeah. Yes. I was going to say that too. Yes. Spend the money on good underwear. Uh-huh. Okay, let me just say that to yes. all our friends. Spend the money on good bra. <laughs> it's worth it. Because it's worth it. it. Best friend. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I love this. Oh, what do you have for us? Okay, so Jay kind of took a little bit of with my, with the hair. I'm the same way. So my real hair is and I mean, like, I am 100% authentic, so I'll just let you, like, where is my real hair? It's under here somewhere. <laughs> it is, like, this long, uh-huh. like, for real. And it's, like, it's taking forever. I don't know if it's because, like, when I had COVID and part of it fell out and it's thinning and uh, all these things. So, I mean, yeah, I just, you know, a quick great. little swipe and um, some you woman somewhere. I use clip-ins. I do sew-ins. I do all kinds of, you know. Come yeah, on, oh, Please, Come on, please, please, everything. <laughs> so, the cool thing is, is like, well, this is so funny. Oh, my gosh. When I first started dating my husband, he did not, he had never dated anyone that was extra like me. And um, <laughs> so, like, he was constantly, like, my lashes. Like, he'd be like, okay, I thought I killed a spider today. And those were your lashes. <laughs> and I'm like, stop doing that. Those are, you know, like, you're you can use them. You're, you're smushing them. I'm like, they're all, like, you know. Recorded now, and uh, and I he opened my glove box and I had some hair in there, and then he, I had it on my sink. He goes, and he's a police officer. He's like, okay, so I almost think like you, you like hurt somebody, and I was like, oh no, it's all pal, it's bought and paid for. Just waiting to go on my head at different times, whether I'm a blonde or brunette. Um, so hair for sure for me. Um, another big thing, I feel like everybody looks better with a tan. I love feeling like super tan. So um, I can't. I don't. Can I? I don't yeah. Move yeah. This. Yeah. You can slide it a little. That's okay. fine. Yeah. So this here, this is uh, the Ashley Graham, the St. Tropez. It's a foam. And I mean, it comes with the mid. It comes with everything. It's like 55 bucks. But Ulta, I've used it for probably like four months now. And you just rub it on and it is cool. And you don't get that orange look. No, you look you so do. tan. That's what I, um, this I is the wine. The no. Oh, I wish. No, I was so, like if you, <laughs> I wish I would have done it before. If you guys had seen me like three days ago before hair and my tan. But, <laughs> and nails. Like, I mean, this was, yeah. Mm-hmm. But, um. This one here, and it fades out. So you know how, like, most of them fade out and, like, you get the patchiness? Yeah. You don't get that with this. Oh. It just fades away like it, nothing. It's All right. beautiful. I love this stuff. Um, so I always put it on. I sleep in it. It says to wash mm-hmm. it off after four hours. Don't listen to that. I sleep in it, and then I wash it off the next morning. I'm going to get some. Nice. It's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Fantastic All stuff. Right. Yeah. So those are kind of like, I guess, hair that, some dry shampoo and some, you know, foundations, but... Oh, we love yeah. our dry shampoo here. Mm. Oh, oh, my yeah. gosh. Big, she didn't big, know about no, that last time shampoo. we taught her about it. Nope. Oh, still yeah. don't use it, but I'm glad. Yeah. But just so your friends. I'm glad tanning lists. stuff and yeah. dry yeah. shampoo works for y'all. Oh, it does. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So I feel the yes. same about texture spray. I, yeah. I, I love this texture spray, and it yes. it just... My hair can look really bad, and I can spray this on and squish it up, and it's so much yeah. better. It's like a miracle spray. And that's got, like, a shine to it as well, too. Yeah, it does. It, be in the it does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, the the other one, and this this is so important for everybody, is just sunscreen, mm-hmm. sunscreen, sunscreen yes. on your face. Um, that you know it helps with owning your age mm-hmm. if you've taken care of your skin for a long time too. So anyway, this sunscreen, um, it's called Eltna MD, mm-hmm. and it's like a a tinted sunscreen. And I put it on my face every day, and it does not feel sunscreeny at all. It just feels. Smooth and beautiful because mm-hmm. I've used a lot of sunscreens and and this is one that I really love and I'm getting no money from them so <laughs> none, <laughs> none, none, none of this promise this isn't plugged but I mean if it wants to be no. yeah <laughs> and I also have skin that does not like to hold makeup yeah. for whatever reason you know it just doesn't like to stay put I, and Joyce talks to me all the time about like why don't you ever wear lipstick I do. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll put lipstick on and it'll just be gone right away. Mm-hmm. And same same with other makeup. So two two that I really love. One is the the um, Thrive Mascara, mm-hmm. and I love this stuff. It it stays on my eyes. It doesn't flake off, and it just 
I love it. It looks beautiful. And then lipstick that I found that really works too. It's called Lip Injection, and I have small lips. Oh, mm-hmm. So but they look um, good. it stays on <laughs> and it plumps me up just a tiny bit. <laughs> Yes. Yes. So anyway, those are just a few fun things. It's not like any of it is life-changing. None of it matters. But we love knowing everybody else's beauty secrets. It's yeah. just fun stuff. Because yeah. honestly, here's the thing. like if, if you're not feeling confident about yourself, the reality is you can do something yes. about it. Yeah. Like you don't have to sit. I mean, of course, read the word, do all the things internally. But outwardly, it's okay to yeah. like do your hair, do your makeup. Get some clothes that you really feel confident in. It's not yes. a bad thing. And a lot of people yeah. feel guilty about that. So Yeah, yeah. and and be who you are. Yeah. If you feel better without makeup, yes. do not wear it. Right. Yes. Right. If you feel better, you know, in a certain way, then let that be your thing. Yes, whatever Don't your thing try is. to be whatever anybody yeah. else says. Yeah. And it, oh, I think that makes such yeah. a big difference for us. And one thing that we want to encourage, we have a little challenge for everyone. We want you to find something that makes you feel beautiful and do it this week. You know, we, we, we talked about some different ideas. You know, maybe it is a new hairstyle. Maybe it is, um, you know, just wearing a little bit different style of clothing. May, maybe it is being really good to someone Mm-hmm. That where it's that inside beauty coming out because you're serving someone else in a beautiful way. But do something that makes you feel beautiful. And we would love it if um, you would make some comments below as you're yeah. watching this on YouTube or wherever else and let us yeah. know yeah. what you plan to do and some of the results of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We also have a free download for you. This is Beauty for Ashes. I'll tell you, this is what it's all about. This is how God can take the ashes of our life, all those scars of the past, all those things that have hurt us, and bring the beauty out of us that He has put in you already. Um, this is an audio download that you can get. So go to JoyceMeyer.org slash talk it out, and you can find out um, about getting that audio download, Beauty for Ashes, and you can catch up on our other episodes. Please don't forget to subscribe, make some reviews, let other people know about the podcast, and Jen, thank you thank so you. much. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I appreciate all my beautiful friends. We thank you all you. very You're much. <laughs> and we will guys. see all of you beautiful friends next time. Bye-bye. Go get today's resource at joycemeyer.org slash talk it out. And while you're at joycemeyer.org slash talk it out, you can also review previous episodes. Don't forget to subscribe wherever you listen or watch Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast.